All right, welcome back. Let's go into the K-Wave News Zoom room. Mark Scott of the Guam uh, National Guard standing by. We'll just get right into it, Mark. So we were talking last week about the old Forever 21 as a vaccination clinic site. I know we didn't see anything official out of uh, the Guard, but everyone was kind of talking about it. So what's the status with that? Yeah, thanks, and good morning, everybody. How you guys doing? Y'all, you're right, Chris. We were looking at uh, adding an additional site if the case, <clears throat> in case we needed it. So yeah, for the past few days now, we were working on opening up Forever 21, uh, but it looks like it's not gonna be needed at this time. We saw a downtrend in the numbers last week, so it looks like we're gonna be able to sustain the mall uh, where we're at. But we're still gonna continue to see, uh, you know, we're gonna survey other locations to see just in case. We need an additional location. Uh, you know, we're always gonna have that in our pocket should the need arise. So are you looking at like in September maybe might be a good time when uh, the booster shot, third shot is supposed to be rolled out? Yeah, that's a good example, Bree. Sure, if there is ever an increased demand, we're gonna wanna look at more locations than just the mall, absolutely. Have, have you guys already been drawn up the, the blueprints for that effort, Mark? Because it seems like it's going to be a whole redo of what we're just finishing up now, which is basically getting needles in the arms of, you know, over 100,000 people with this booster. Yeah, this is relatively new news, but it's not the first time we've heard about it. You know, our planners are down there with all their infusion and Mr. Brown's working out plans and, <laughs> and coming up with their concepts of operations so that when that time does come, we will have a plan for sure good you guys got a plan right that's cool it's refreshing uh mark so <laughs> when you talk about the numbers not uh supporting the opening of a new vaccination clinic because of a downward trend like can you go into that a little more what were the numbers last week and how do they compare to the the prior week or the weeks before yeah last week was it started off real busy i think we had around mid 800s on the monday and then every day after that decreased down to i want to say like 620 on friday uh, which is a sustainable number for us. Uh, the reason for it, Chris, your guess is as good as mine. Mm. It may have had to do with the update of the EO. It may have had to do with, uh, you know, that's the amount of people who want to get the shot because it is still a choice. Uh, but whatever the reason is, uh, the number w that we saw at the end of last week is, is something that is sustainable at the mall. So how many more uh, grown-ups are left? Because we've got the... the how many more grown-ups, adults, who are eligible for the <laughs> shot are, are left, uh, you know, just based on, on your math? Because we have the kid population under 12, can't get it. Yeah, you know, I, I took a look at the JIC release this morning, and I think we've been hovering around 80% or so of the eligible population. So, you know, obviously I'm not smart enough to have a job that includes math, but uh, whatever our population is, minus 20%, seems to be where we're at. And this is the, I mean, this is the last like group of adults that um, are eligible for the shot. So are you, do you think we're going to run up into a wall uh, sooner or later of, of those people who just don't want it for whatever reason, no, I mean, even for medical reasons or whatever? I wouldn't call it a wall. You know, I mean, the, the, the governor, her EO really presents a choice to people and the people have that freedom to make that choice. Um, you know, a wall says that there's some kind of barrier, but you know, the society that we live in grants them that freedom. So, you know, those who want to come and get it and those who don't, don't have to. Are you guys still providing um, any sort of support like at the isolation facility, the quarantine facility, or yes, transport? Yes, thanks Bree. We have a lot of other stuff going on. Uh, you may have seen us at the testing site in Tizen. We're helping out with that. We're helping out public health labs. We're helping with the vaccines. We're at the UOG call center. Uh, we are at the QFAC and ISOFAC still to include the airport and to include the drivers who drive known positives to the baby. Um, we're helping with the PEB, the PEBT distro. Uh, we have medics at the hospitals and, and other things that we're supporting too. So yeah, there's still a lot going on for See? sure. Okay, so you guys have not uh, stopped at all. Yeah, our operational tempo is what we call it. It's been pretty high. Um, we have rotated people, new people come in, some people go off orders, but for the most part, we're in this fight and it's going to sustain it as long as we're needed. What about um, 
Afghanistan. Has the guard been called upon to assist or asked, requested? Because we do see, you know, in national media, there are several National Guard members from different um, districts who are participating in, in uh, helping with this uh, massive airlift and evacuation. Right. So, so they're calling it Operation Allied Refuge. Uh, it started a few weeks ago and it just it has to do with evacuating our um, allied uh, people in Afghanistan who were interpreters, cooks, drivers, things of that nature. Uh, so getting them out is called uh, Operation Allies Refuge. Yeah. So a part of that now is uh, they're taking some of these refugees to the states. I think there's six or seven military bases that are housing the refugees temporarily. Uh, you know, well, they can do things like process their visas, you know, get their COVID-19 vaccination, get health checkups, things like that. Um, so no Guam Guardsmen uh, are, have been deployed to Afghanistan to help on that side. Um, but the Air Force did a call out to ask for volunteers in the States, you know, these bases where they'll be coming in and in processing. And we did have a few Air Guards that raised their hand to volunteer. So should that come down, should their orders get published, uh, we may have a handful of Air Guardsmen that go uh, to the States, uh, to one of those military bases to help out with the in-processing effort uh, here fairly soon. Well, Mark, so, you're not tracking yeah. any movement of Afghans, Afghanistan uh, refugees to the territory of Guam? Say again? Are you tracking any movement of uh, Afghanistan refugees to the territory of Guam? No. No, haven't heard anything about that. Uh, we did our staff estimates and our whole preparation a few months ago, and we heard the rumors too. Yeah. And we let everyone know what we're capable of here in Guam as a Guam Guard. You know, with some of our constraints that we have here with things like real estate, manpower, resources, you know, we pretty much let everyone know that, uh, you know, as much as Guam is always here to help, like the governor said, we'll help where we can. But the reality of what we can do here with our real estate constraints and staffing constraints wasn't a whole lot. So no, we haven't heard anything yet as far as moving them here. Thank you for your time, Mark. No further Thanks, questions. <laughs> I can't handle the truth. <laughs> I'll be on that wall. Did you order to go red? Okay. <laughs> Mark, appreciate it, my friend. Always a pleasure, guys. Thank yeah. you so much. Let us know. Keep safe. us posted. If you guys are activated for any like roadblock checkpoint and kind of thing that you know this week, give us a heads up. Of course. You guys uh, take care. Stay you too. Safe. You too, my friend. You too. Hey, what's up, guys? Good morning. We're in PCOR 3. I feel like they should have changed that, you know. Maybe we need to reinvent the status.